Hey all, welcome to Barker's Reefs. On this episode, we're gonna do another tank tour. In fact, we're gonna check out Jason's nine week old K1200. All right, guys, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And on today's episode, I'm gonna go check out a local's reef tank. Now, Jason and I have known each other for a number of years, but it does highlight just how small the world is, particularly in a little town like Geelong where we live. In fact, Jason used to work many moons ago at the local fish shop here in Geelong before I was even in reefing, despite the fact that it was only two doors down from my family business. And then a few years later, he worked at the engineering shop where my father and I would take engine components to get machined after well, after we blew them up drag racing. So um, Jason and I have crossed paths for a couple of decades now. So today's episode, I'm finally gonna get to go over to his house, check out his brand new K1200. And I'll be honest, I can't wait because I love checking out these cage systems and every tank tour I do, I learn so much about reefing techniques and things that I could personally do better with my own reef tank. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Let's jump into it. All right, Jason, tell me all about your tank, man. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, no worries, Sam. Um, yeah, well, it's a uh, K1200 and uh, it's, you know, like yourself, it's it's a dream reef tank for me. And um, yeah, I've had uh, numerous amounts of homemade uh, tanks. So, you know, there's always somewhere where you want an improvement and, and mainly the um, the the side panel where all your electrical compartment goes definitely is, was a huge seller for me it huge was like, plus on the cage system oh, <laughs> to have it all looking schmicko and yep, yep. You know, super tidy in there oh, it was yes yeah. so when i got this i was like oh, fantastic so, <laughs> yeah they, and i can't fault this tank it's um well the only problem i can fault is is that it's too good um <laughs> of not a bad problem to have i've always had high nitrates high phosphates and with this tank it's i'm I'm having to dose nitrates and phosphates, yep, yep. so um, <clears throat> yeah. So now, that, that's this system's fairly new, yeah. You've, yeah, you've yeah, upgraded yeah. from um, another tank, and this one's been running for how long now? Uh, just over nine weeks. Nine yeah, weeks wow. In three days or something. So now, obviously, seeing the amount of life in there, you, you haven't just put all that in, and I was that's transferred from another system. Yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, my Aqua One uh, uh, three footer, it was. So yep. yeah, the three big main rocks on this side mm -hmm. on the right side there um they they came from the other tank and the rest of it was yeah all new like yeah, my, my um zoa colony rock that was all new and, and this main large one there was Absolutely. all done by uh Love the, the reef rock yeah 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 a serious overhang on that piece there it just gives you lots of real estate without um yeah, that exactly. cluttering things up. You've got yeah. great flow and swim throughs. Looks an absolute treat. Yeah, and that and that was the idea of it too, was to not, you know, have a mountain of rock. Yep. Which yep. you know, pretty much the rest of my tanks have been like. And, uh, <laughs> Definitely the old school approach yeah. of the rock wall, and then uh, you can jam as much in there as you want. Where yeah. this is, this is a real open and flowing scape. Very very modern. I like it, but it's modern, but still looks natural, which is. Um, can be part of the challenge sometimes. I feel sometimes oh, it's absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Modern absolutely. scapes look a little bit, a little bit too artificial. They can yep. be real shelf-like. Where yes. this has got some real natural curves to it. Yeah, and that's uh, seeing some of the tanks of today. You, you just can't help be inspired by the, you know, the big arcs that people are making, or one base and lots of hangovers. And, for sure. And, and and for me, that that's real natural, like in the ocean where they can Definitely. swim throughs and. Um, yeah. So speaking of swim throughs, tell us about some of the fish you've got in the system. Yeah. Well, there's. Um, yeah, I love I love the anthias. They're um, they're, they're beautiful, you know, schooling type fish and. Definitely. And and, school of lie tails in there. Yeah, and I've so far so good. They've uh, <laughs> I haven't lost any. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I love the uh, the designer clowns. So I've got a midnight there and. Um, Gorgeous. I forgot what he was again, a frostbite, I think it was. He looks frostbite like. Yeah, and you can see that. green patches on him as well on the side. He's yeah, yeah very stunning. Beautiful fish for me. Him. And uh, yeah, we've got our uh, Australian stripey there. He's I've had him since he was a quarter of that size. He was tiny. <laughs> they come in pretty and small. And he is eh? such a pig. <laughs> My man, he eats. Yeah, no one's ever accused them of being a shy eater. That's for <laughs> no, sure. But. Um. No. And the and the rabbit fish there, he's, yeah, he's stunning. I love the colours on him. So 
vibrant and uh, you know you got your blues and pinks and yeah, yeah really they're, they're just a, a stunning um, fish and almost and, a variant on a harlequin tusk the um colors in there yeah. it's just crazy yeah and and the, the work he does on the tank is amazing like he's he's cleaned up algae like you wouldn't believe so yep. for me they're they're detrimental in a reef tank yeah the, absolutely the way he, he cleans and not just a good looking fish but he's yeah. actually carrying his weight which is yeah, an absolute absolutely. bonus and uh the uh, bristle tooth tang he's is immaculate at cleaning as well so yeah, you know for me they're they're the two tangs you or yeah, the two fish you'd have in a reef tank at absolutely. any time so yeah, and then obviously you got your Blue tangs, which gorgeous. are just gorgeous. Yep, yep. So, Absolute staple to a reef tank. Yeah, and and his name's John. John. John, John Dory. <laughs> <laughs> that will do the trick nicely. So yeah, <laughs> and we've got a little bang eye there, and yeah, yeah. I did he see he did have a partner when we first got him, and he even had a clutch in his oh, mouth wow, yep. for once. And uh, but then not long after, she died. So. Yeah, strange. We're, we're struggling to uh, find a partner because he just seems to want to kill everything <laughs> that, <laughs> that resembles it. You know, Fair one enough. of him. Fair enough. Maybe carrying one clutch was enough for him. He's yeah. like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no way, no, no. I so, could go without eating for a month, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got Benny, the um, Tiger Blenny. Oh, whereabouts was Benny? He's yeah. just sitting up there next to the gun. He's always oh, interested he to uh, yeah, see what's going on. Gorgeous, and, then, and I did yeah. see a little coral beauty. Oh, yeah, there he is under the underhang there. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah, he's a new addition to the tank. How you go? How's he settling with the corals? Not yeah. getting anything too no, much. No, not yet. No, we we feed these fish three times a day, mm -hmm. just so you yep. know, try and keep the phosphates up. Yeah, yeah, fair and cool. so I feel like yeah, he's always got a big belly, so he's, <laughs> he can't be hungry enough to eat corals. Well, that's what I'm hoping anyway. So, so. <laughs> that's the plan. Yeah, that works well. Now. Tell us about some of the um, equipment you've got running this system. All right, the equipment um, well, inside here. Yeah, it's it's. I've just changed the bubble Magnus over, so I had this whopping big, huge um, skimmer in there, and and uh, I'm hoping that having a smaller skimmer in there will help me uh, <laughs> Let increase those nutrients. Come up, yep. yeah, yeah. But I oh, tell you what, and the um, the three thousand. A roller there that I've got there. I can. That's been a huge thing in um, having zero nitrates and phosphates. Yeah, definitely. Like it just cleans everything up so much. Um, it used to be one of those things. I mean, I was always a fan of filter socks, yeah. but um, I know a lot of people weren't. But that's because really filter socks probably should be changed daily. Yeah, if, yeah. You know, exactly. And and every same second thing. Second days maybe the be like a, a good compromise, but daily really to get the most out of them. And yeah. no one's changing filter socks and, daily. And you've got to have a high. A high sump for it because I had one in my um, Red Sea and to change that was a pain in the yes. butt. Like, yep. Yep. And so I ended up not having to do that, and hence, you know, high nitrates and phosphates. <laughs> so, but yeah, and when I saw it come with this, I was like, they're coming out, and I'm getting one of these rollers. and Definitely. And I'm so you, just amazed at how well they work. You were able to modify the um, cage sump to fit that in okay? You just cut out yeah, the sump baffle? Yeah, I didn't, have to, didn't, I cut didn't anything. have to cut anything. I just took away the. Um, the socks and put that in that place. Set it up where the socks would normally sit yeah. in, and uh, just routed the plumbing through it. And yep. job done. Doesn't get any easier than that. And as you no, say, you got really. with the side door that opens, you got easy access to change the rolls. And oh, it's fantastic, man! Makes life easy. It really does. Yeah, and so what, watching your um, your video on setting up your dream reef and and getting the bio balls in there was, you know, I felt that that was quite detrimental in getting this tank up and running as quick as I wanted it to be. So, sure uh, and yeah, the bio load on it was amazing. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. how quick you can get a tank up like this, doing it the right way. For sure, bacteria is, is yeah, king, absolutely. absolutely. And yeah, you've got that fantastic um, space for it in the in the cave there, those four little cups that allow water to go over the top and through them underneath. Yeah, oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's designed so well for yeah, them, crazy and, not and to use it so for. so easy to get to and clean. And yeah, yeah, which is the other. Stuff overlooked thing with uh, bio media yeah. is that it's only effective if it's clean yeah um, and exactly even with filter rollers we still end up with a bit of detritus yeah you about. do but it's as soon as your media is clogged it's <laughs> it's kind of working against you not for you so yeah. yeah keeping them clean is key yeah absolutely and i've got a um as you can see a little filter there with the uh to keep the ph up but yeah nice i haven't really had to use that yet yep so yep co2 it's, scrubber on yeah, there just CO2 to scrubber, yep. keep the ph up and just my, uh, got a little cheap um, Asian 
light that I use for my refugium. Yeah, it's perfect. It's $15 off eBay, so. Works a treat. Oh, it does. The, the macro in there grows like crazy. Yeah, right? nice, I've nice. I've cut it into a third just to help. Yeah. It's a good job so there. it was just... absorbing all the nutrients as well, and I was like, I have to get rid of uh, you know most of this and start again. Working too well. Yeah, it really was. So yeah, that's you know, as much as I love the uh, Tunzi you know yeah, refugee yeah. light, that's yeah, it works for a so, fraction of the price. Why not? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, nice. Yeah. So you've got a little calcium reactor. Got a little in there, calcium. Running. Yeah, that hasn't been going for that long. Maybe a um, couple of weeks. So yep. and that's kicking along nicely. Beautiful. So and uh, I've, yeah, and I'm running. I was running a doser in there. Though, yes. But um, for some reason, I've lost Wi-Fi, and I'm having trouble getting. So maybe uh, <laughs> you can give me a hand <laughs> setting that back. See up. if we can get it working again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, hopefully, with the calcium reactor online, there won't be as much of a need for it. But, yeah. Um, well, uh, well, I want to get that up um, and running and dose uh, calcwasa as yep, well. Yep. So I read an awesome article on a guy who farms over in the States and he he suggests, you know, running the calc at night time. Yep, yep, so just keep your pH stable. pH stable, so. Definitely. Yeah, and also you use that to top up your RO with yep. it as well, so. Yep, yep. It's, it's not a slurry as such, it's fully diluted, so it's, Works. it's pretty, you know, harmless, yep. it's safe yep, and, sure. and and easy. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm all about. If it's easy, then. I do love the way um, some things in reefing come in and out of fashion and, and some of the old things are, are new again and Calcos is one of those things that was yeah, the go-to oh, oh, absolutely, for so yeah. many years and then people moved on from it and now people are like, well, hang on, why did we move on from it? Yeah, <laughs> it's so yeah. beneficial and so easy and affordable that just why would you not use it? Yeah, exactly, mate. That yeah. uh, makes sense. So. And uh, you mentioned the Cade's got the power center down the down the side here. Can you show us? Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. The absolute. Oh, these, uh, these currents are just the bomb, mate. I, I love them. <laughs> They're just everything's set out neat. So handy Hide there. The You've got all your power boards there with the outlets on the back, so that you can keep all the um, cables and things yeah. out of the way. Easy spot to mount all your uh, controllers there. You've got your temperature controller there. And you've still got space for a further expansion oh, should you need it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm hoping to get a Aquatronica yeah, um, nice. reefing yep. Little controller. computer. Yeah, controller. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a bit of room for that when it comes. <laughs> should the time come. Yeah. Now, moving uh, still on the equipment side of things, we'll just head up towards the tank. You've got uh, a couple of wave makers on each end. Yes, yeah, just to, I mean, those MP40s, they, they push the water through Definitely. really well for yeah. on this size tank. and. But I found, yeah, there's a couple of little quiet spots, so just to, um, you know, make sure those dead spots get taken too, I uh, put in an MP10 and one of those, ah, oh, I forgot what that, Nero 5s in yep. there, so, yep. and that, that's more than enough in there. Definitely, yeah, that's going to keep that, your flow yeah. requirements up where you need them. I imagine they're probably not running at crazy percentages either. No, they're not, no, yep, not yep. at all, so... Uh, they were yeah. a treat. I mean, I'd rather have multiple sources of flow at, at lower Absolutely, percentages yeah. and uh, yep. just keep the whole tank moving. That that works yeah. well. And you see, by like the pieces in there, you've got such a nice, a nice gentle flow all through. Like you can see the uh, anemones and the uh, soft corals just nicely dancing in the flow. So that would be dialed into perfection. I'd say that looks an absolute treat. Yeah, there's a couple of hard spots, but you know, that's. I think uh, better the, hard than yeah, <laughs> with the open scape you've got and uh, four points of flow that should um, that should keep the water moving nicely and in fact yeah like I said everything looks like it's flowing beautifully yeah I'm pre I'm pretty happy with it Sam it's um, yeah it's it's doing well and uh, <clears throat> I feel um, yeah there's yeah the corals seem to love it they're, they're getting really good uh, movement and uh, I'm getting some awesome growth on some of the some of the acros and beautiful yeah that, those multi plates they just <laughs> they take off they, they they're amazing how quick <laughs> they grow they definitely do like grow it's quickly. like why can't they all grow like that? <laughs> yeah it would be handy <laughs> yeah. now before we move on to the corals and other things tell us about uh you've got some equipment up here we've got some radians and a, and a pretty cool looking light rail you got going on there yeah this, tell us um, about that uh yeah when I, when I was building this thing i was um Again, watching your your uh, light frame and I thought, oh, having that all automated and, and going <laughs> right up and I thought, oh, that's full on. But um, yeah, just searching for what I felt I wanted and uh, yeah, came up. 
I was almost going to um, have this on with hydraulics with a button, so it yep. does it all automatically. But I mean, just have to lift this up like this, and everything comes out of the way. Yeah, and it's one-handed. And yeah, it goes it's up easy nice and it stays and easy up. And yeah, gives get you full it. access to the top of the tank. I mean, you oh, can you can get your whole yeah, yeah, you can, torso in there if you needed to. Yeah, so <laughs> it gets everything out of the way with really, just one lift. It really does a great job. And it comes back down nice and easy. And yeah, it's, it's easy. Gives a spot to keep all the cables and things tidy and works an absolute yeah, treat. Yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, I'm so uh, wrapped with having that. Normally, I'll hang them from the ceiling. Yep, and yep. Yeah, that's always been a pain. There. I mean, it looks great, but yeah. pain in the ass when you've got to move them or Definitely. whatever else. So. Yeah, this was brilliant it was, and it worked a treat, so I can't fault it. Nice, and this is a design you came up with? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. There, was, there was something very similar on on the internet, but um, pretty much just worked out how high I wanted it and how I needed it to be, so it worked really well. Does the trick nicely, yeah. Yeah, and, they, yeah. and yeah, I've got the radians hanging from them, the, the XR15 and 30s in yep. the blue. So not, cause I, I just love the blue tinge that they give for sure from them and uh, yeah and, and the fact that they're you know got their own programs you, you don't have to do yeah, anything you don't have to have a PhD no. in uh, photosynthesis you yeah, can exactly, turn them yeah. on and or say par, yeah I want, you I want yeah, this schedule and, and um, I'm trying to grow these type of corals and this is the time I want the sunrise and sunset and yeah. um, they work out the rest which I mean the learning curves in reefing is strong enough as it is. You don't need yeah. to have that PhD in photosynthesis. No, exactly, mate. And, and if you do want to change a little bit of them, you, of can, you can do that in each one. So Absolutely. The ability so, to fine-tune them is not removed. Yeah. Just, it's not a requirement. Yeah, so they're, they're a great light. And, yeah, I mean, this little blue digita that I've got there, he, yeah. I had him as almost like this red one there, and he's just, just loving know, it. he's just growing out of control already so tell us some more about the corals you've got in the system um yeah well i'm not a huge coral namer <laughs> that's I do, all right so, you don't have to give so them I usually Latin just, names i just <laughs> buy what i what i like and that's uh, the way it should be yeah and, I, and i'm like i'm attracted to the pinks and the blues so for sure so you'll find uh the the missus likes the brown one the brown <laughs> millie but it's pretty cool it's it's hairy and uh, you know it fly, looks nice uh, it and looks, flowy looks so. good to me it's gonna have yeah. a beautiful growth as it um as it grows out that's yeah. lovely and then my well when i bought this millie at the back he was um like a peachy color okay and and i think two three weeks ago i got him yes so he's already changed a bit in color to a I don't know, uh, yellow tips on it. Definitely. I would say with the more, um, yeah, it's just changed colour and it's yeah. it's uh, probably even more stunning than when I first got it. Which what I love about wild caught yeah. SBS in particular is you never know what they're going to do in your system. Know, and, um, yeah. More often than not, they actually end up looking better. Yeah. Um, I know people think, well, it's a flip of a coin, they can get better or worse, but yeah. they, they'll they go different. I don't think they're ever worse. I think yeah, they yeah, either yeah. get better or different, which yeah. is a pretty good uh, roll of the dice, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've got good. this beautiful bonsai growing in there. I can see this um, blue with the green polyps. Oh, yeah, looks he's an absolute stunning, treat. isn't he? Yeah. And as you say, you've got uh, the blue digi there just growing right in front of your eyes. Red cap on the back wall there. That's going to be a showpiece once that curls out. And yeah, I reckon so. Yeah. <laughs> really well, an that's absolute what stunner. I'm hoping. So, yeah, and, and as you can see, I love my morphs there. I've got plenty of yeah. corolla morphs down there. and got some stunners down in there. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few all around. The rock work definitely yeah, somewhere yeah. Over in this yeah you've got a nice collection in there so. definitely and i love yeah. the softies you've got in the system too i love the um xenia down there in the corner just so that it can't um get onto yeah. your main rock and take off but you've still got the beautiful flow and um motion from it oh uh, and they're i reckon they're one of the most underrated corals absolutely when, when the you know when the when you stop when the, the flow of the pumps stop and you've got uh you know, just the zinnia slowly moving yeah. and, and you see them pulsing. Oh, it's just beautiful. It like, I totally agree. They're just so mesmerizing for me anyway. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, they missed the hype train, but there's no reason for them to not be on board. Because, yeah, exactly. Because, um, as you say, the, the, it's one of the few corals that actually gives an even and completely different motion when the flow is off. Oh, and, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just gives you something to look at in that feed mode. And... Uh, <laughs> and, and 
Yeah, and I'd love to get some of those overseas zinnias too. Yeah, like yeah. the short ones, they 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 just go really quick and. <laughs> To me, they're just a beautiful coral. I love Definitely. them. Yeah. Definitely. No, he's got uh, a beautiful spot right down there in that corner. Yeah, and I, I did have a big one in the back there, but he was starting to, to uh, already uh, cling onto the back wall. And I thought, <laughs> no, to get he's, getting, he's getting a bit big now. The Time Xenia is me. beautiful, but um, yeah, you don't want to end up with a yeah. tank just of Xenia. So yeah, yeah you keeping got, him You've got to be careful with them. <laughs> keeping on his own island is yeah, a good call. Yeah, absolutely. So. And I absolutely love this, um, this finger leather in... Um, in the back there, the green on that. Oh, the Kenya tree, yeah. yeah it's he's, a stunner. Yeah, he's beautiful. And it's amazing. I, I reckon he was about the size of just that back one there, yes. maybe a bit smaller, and he's just exploded. Taken off. Yeah, he's so, absolutely beautiful. And I, and I feel like they're, you know, probably a bit like a Xenia where you need to. Um, Keep them separated, otherwise. Keep them at bay, yeah. At least with yeah. the leathers, you can always you can always slice it off just yeah. with a sharp yeah. blade, and um, yeah, exactly. it'll, it'll come back. Where, yeah, the Xenia, even yeah. if you slice it off, it'll just come back. Yes, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty um, pretty full on. I love this yeah. um, blasto going on oh, here. Oh, he's sensational! Absolutely yeah, he's beautiful gorgeous. beast. Really, really nice. Yeah, I, I feed him heaps, so I'm hoping he'll. he'll he's really already looking great. So. He's nice and plump, and yeah. And you've got this uh, central rock here, is a bit of a zoa garden going on yeah, there. Yeah, it is, nice, yeah. Nice I've, variety I've, there. I think in my last four-foot tank I had, I, um, I planted zoas on my main rock. And mm -hmm. oh, one, I can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been, um, oh, not Sunny D's. It was a, one of your more common favourite sure. zoas. And that spread so quickly and it started... You know, <laughs> overtaking acros yep. and smothering them, and I yep. thought, never again am I uh, putting one on my rock. <laughs> so I thought, beautiful. I, have, I love Mizoas, so I'm going to create a, its own little big front and center prior yeah, place there. Exactly. So, and I mean, the way you've got the scape there, so you do have some separate bommies and some spots to put some of these things that can be. I don't know, for lack of better words, invasive in a beautiful way, yeah. but um, they can be invasive on their own rock and um, yeah. everyone gets the best of both worlds. Exactly, then. yeah, exactly, mate. So, yeah, and um, I've got a nice little Gorgonia at the back. I love Gorgonias. Yeah, there. I uh, see them up there. Yeah, there's something about out. them that I absolutely adore. I'm uh, just waiting for uh, Deer Park to get in a few coloured ones. And Definitely. Because uh, when you when you can feed a tank as much as I do, I feel like <laughs> beautiful. You can you yeah, can have those, those sort of things. Non photosynthetic in there. corals yeah. can take full advantage. Yeah. Now speaking of feeding a lot and uh, and your nitrates and phosphates, what is your sort of weekly routine on this system? What what's it? Yeah, what's your maintenance. Um, oh, maintenance. There hasn't been any at the moment. Cause it's so <laughs> so new and everything's been kept so clean. So it's been great. Working a treat. Um, but yeah, feeding wise. Uh, three times a day, so it'll be an early lunch and yep. an evening, and they'll get um, defrosting uh, probably ten blocks wow. a day. Yeah, yeah. So they'll, yeah, they'll almost get all of that throughout the 24 hours. So full on. Yeah, it, it's quite a bit, but you know, if if you can do it, why not? Yeah, why I agree. I? People, I often see people saying, "I can't get my nitrates and phosphates up," and I'm like, "Feed more." They're like, oh, I'm already feeding heaps, and I'm like, "Well." feed more yeah. <laughs> unless, yeah, well, that's, unless it's costing you 50 well, that, bucks a day in food well, feed that's, more that's that's why i've had to start dosing phosphates yeah. and nitrates because it's like how much food do i need to spend and how, <laughs> yeah, <for laughs> how sure. much do they need for and sure. it's like all right i might need a bit of help but being a yeah. new system i'm sure it'll um it, it'll build up a little hidden stash of detritus yeah. somewhere and it'll start effectively dosing those nitrates and phosphates yeah, for you yes. soon enough well, it's it's funny because uh, this week, for the first time since I've had it, I've got it in the in the sweet spot. Yep, so, perfect. Yeah, 0 0.03 phosphates and uh, 5.2 nitrates. Lovely, so yeah, perfect I'm for like, a nice mixed tree like this. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> all the corals will absolutely love that. No, yeah. that's great. Perfect. So. Now, what's the plans for the tank? I mean, it's it's so new, and it's because you've been able to bring some pieces across and. Um, build it up it, it i mean it it looks like a tank that's been running for a year where's yeah, yeah. what's the next plans for the next well, six months 12 months with the uh, system i think uh, just watching it all grow just watching it grow to you know it's all it's glory and splendor and and maybe find room for a nice clam in there yeah beautiful so I, I, yeah i feel like with the clam i want to give it you know another six months or yep. so and just let it really stabilize and and then definitely yeah because clams i think 
they're a beautiful centerpiece for any reef tank. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it's good to see some nice clams coming back out again. There was a bit of a hiatus for, I don't know, 12, yeah. 18 months or so and starting to see a few nice ones come back out again. So definitely be a uh, lovely addition. Any, any plans for any further fish? Um, yeah, actually there is plans either maybe for a powder blue or, um, you know, I'd, if someone's willing to hand over their yellow tang, that'd be, <laughs> that'd, that'd be awesome. But, Definitely a hot commodity at the moment. <laughs> yeah, oh, very much so. But yeah, powder blue or, um, maybe a powder brown, I think. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I, there was a nice Moorish idol at Deer Park yep, yep. and I was like, oh, it was so much fun to take him home. But, <laughs> yeah. Um. Dave highly doesn't recommend them in a reef tank. And I'm like, yeah, they oh, do no. develop a little taste for corals. And um, yeah. it may not be overnight. It might be six months down the track or 12 months well, down the track. But that's once they get a taste is, for yeah. it, it'd, it'd eat most things in there in a, in a day or two, I think. So, yeah, so it can thought, be pretty um, devastating when they do that. So uh, it's such a beautiful fish. And it's they like, are. no, you, can't, you won't eat corals. You won't. No. <laughs> he promises <laughs> he won't. Yeah. <laughs> So, but yeah. And, oh, cool. Um, and the powder tang is absolutely stunning addition. They can definitely be a difficult fish, mm. but um, yeah, it, whether it be powder brown, grey, blue, um, yeah. even some of the um, some of the the hybrid, the powder purples and stuff look incredible. Yeah. Um, they always have such a presence to them. Yeah, I've I've had, I've had a powder blue before, and I've had him uh, would have been close to two years, two and a half years, and. Uh, I had a massive, massive meltdown in my whole reef system, which, yep. you know, I had my whole garage decked out with a huge sump and yep. about yep. 10 tanks in there. Yes. It was all connected to the one system and, uh, yeah, had a massive storm one night and oh, no. came home and half the f floor was covered in water and uh, my huge, I had a huge uh, giganta. Yep. Nem, Big and nem, that yep. half of that was melted away. Yeah, and that's just going to send it, nutrients it, through the roof, it, and it almost poisoned the whole system. Yeah, so, and I lost, lost my quickly. blue tank through that. But bummer. Yeah, but here we here we are again, starting all <laughs> over again. <laughs> it is a hobby where we rebuild and come back with some new knowledge and new approaches, yeah. and um, try things a little bit oh, differently. And that's the thing, like when I first started, because I've been in reefing for thirty years now, and yes. And, the way it was back then to the way it is now, it is so different. And, yep, yep. And uh, yeah, it's just amazing the the information that we we all share and uh, absolutely you know, all learn from is incredible. So yeah, I think we're very blessed at this day and age to be I able to have a reef more. tank and, and keep them successfully. Yeah, I think yeah. the the information age we're in with the internet um, combined with the, the technology in the hobby is um, really accelerated, particularly over the last 10 years um, that I've been in it, I've seen things just come along leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. So I can only appreciate what it would be like from um, 30 years ago to now. And um, I mean, sometimes we take for granted where the hobby's at. So um, yeah. we should uh, take a moment to, to remain humble and enjoy the opportunities we have. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. Any uh, final words or anything else you'd like to share with the viewers out there? Um, yeah, just don't give up and, uh, yeah, it, you know, get in a little community that loves to share and, and share their knowledge and, and help you become a great reefer. Beautiful. Couldn't so. I think of wiser words myself. Nicely done. Well, thank you so much for having us here and um, showing us through your reef. It's an absolutely stunning tank and um, I, I'm really excited to see it. I mean, I can't believe how... <laughs> how developed it looks already in um, that short time. So I can't yeah. wait to see where it is at the six month and 12 month mark. It's gonna be an absolute um, beautiful addition to your home. And um, right here in the lounge room, you'll just be able to yeah, switch do, between yeah. the uh, footy and the, um, <laughs> <laughs> and the reef tank and we'll probably give up on the footy after a while because this is gonna take all of your attention. I don't think I've watched the telly since I've had this tank on. <laughs> it's so. not just me then, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, awesome. Well, again, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome, Sam. Thanks for coming around. Cheers. All right, guys, there you have it. That is Jason's brand new K1200 and what an absolutely cracking tank it is. He is off to a fly with that system. I cannot wait to see, if it's only nine weeks old now, I cannot wait to see how it matures over the next six, 12, 18 months. And you can rest assured that I will drop in and visit Jason as often as I can to keep you guys updated with the progress of that tank. Speaking of 
keeping up to date with the progress of tanks, be sure you subscribe to the channel because I have a couple of incredible tank tours coming up, as well as a little sneak peek of some corals that I did end up purchasing with my birthday money that you may recall from a couple of episodes ago. So you don't want to miss out on those episodes because I assure you there's some nice things to come. Other than that, guys, if you've got any questions, comments, feedback for either myself or Jason, feel free to pop them down in the comments section. I do personally reply to each and every comment there, so it is the best way to get hold of me. Other than that, guys, till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.